the small block Chevy, brilliantly simple design, one of its best features being its serviceability. Until you bolt all this half-baked retrofitted emissions crap on it in a desperate attempt to get the EPA off your ass about your smog-dumping tire-spinning freedom machine. There's a lot of wives' tales about desmogging these things. They'll make the car faster. Technically, but not really. It's still a 305. Or that if you delete a factory catalytic converter, you'll be fined into the poorhouse and forced to share a jail cell with a 350-pound man ominously named Cowboy. Maybe that's true in California, but here in America, it's not illegal to drive a car with a deleted catalytic converter. While it is a violation of the Federal Clean Air Act to physically remove the catalytic converter, they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you were the one who removed it. Additionally, since these third-gen Firebirds and Camaros are getting so old, they're all exempt from emissions testing in most states. Well, the states that know how to have a good time anyway. I may not be a lawyer, but I did get this information from a lawyer, so you may interpret it how you will. You may not believe me, but there's one thing you cannot deny. Desmogging your engine bay will make everything cleaner and simpler. So let's get to it. Let's start with a brief description of the system. Skip to here if you want to get to the good stuff. Here's the smog pump. It's just a serpentine belt driven air pump that pumps clean air through that pipe up into this ugly air injection valve solenoid box thing. We're gonna be removing both of those. In open loop mode, this valve assembly takes air from the smog pump and pipes it into the exhaust manifold to help clean up the exhaust gases a little bit. Once in closed loop mode, the valves switch and send the air into the catalytic converter through a pipe. This scrubs off more carbon monoxide using dark magic. We're gonna start by removing the air diverter assembly. Pull these two hoses off. <clears throat> There's a 10 millimeter here, which I've taken the courtesy of losing already. And if you pry up on these tabs, you can separate the cover just enough to see another little sneaky 10 millimeter down in there. There she is. Lift the assembly up so you can get underneath and access the tabs and remove this cover completely. Disconnect these two connectors. and pull the assembly out. You may or may not want to keep all these parts together in a box somewhere. If you follow this pipe down to the back of the smog pump, you'll see two 10 millimeter bolts. Those are next. Take a big one inch wrench and after a good 12 hour soak with the lube of your choice, unscrew the manifold check valves. You might be able to leave these in, but the exhaust might leak out since manifold pressure isn't constant and there's a cheap alternative. That'll leave you with this crossover pipe, which runs behind the engine and over to the driver's side exhaust manifold. I'll just remove the hose and leave the pipe installed because I don't know where it bolts on and frankly, I don't think it's worth the effort to remove it. I'm just gonna cap them off with half inch iron pipe caps from Home Depot. Next, let's get the smog pump out. First, undo the MAF sensor bracket and intake hose clamp to get this out of the way. Just crack these three 10 millimeter pulley bolts loose. You wanna do this while the belt's still on it, otherwise you're gonna have a hard time. Then get a half inch ratchet or breaker bar and retract the auto tensioner to slacken the belt and pull it completely out of the engine. Now remove the pulley bolts. And of course, the pulley. Hold your breath, because we're taking a deep dive looking for two T40 Torx bolts. One there, and one down there. Get those out of there. Rock the pump free, and finagle it out of the bottom. I'm gonna need two hands for this, but you get the picture. With the pump missing, you'll have to redo your serpentine belt routing and buy a slightly larger belt. You can also buy a smog pump delete pulley, but this is easier, simpler, and cheaper. Here's the old belt routing, and here's the new routing. Starting at the crank pulley, go up around the AC compressor, down under the auto tensioner, 
up and over the alternator, down under the power steering pump, and back up and over the water pump, back down to the crank pump. Crank pulley. What's a crank pump? All your accessories will still turn the same direction at the same speed, so you won't need anything else. Lastly, we need to get rid of this communist nonsense and let the mighty 305 breathe. I got this 3-inch tailpipe extension and clamps at Advance Auto. In lieu of a tailpipe expander, I also spent $4 on a coupler here. This next part is only illegal if you plan on driving the car on public roads, which I'm not planning to do. I'm going to use it for off-road use only. I'm just going to unclamp the catalytic converter here, clamp on the connector, and then clamp the flared end of the tailpiece onto the outlet. With it flared at either end, you could just clamp the coupler to the extension, but it really should be welded with a DC MIG or TIG machine on DC electrode negative. I have an AC stick welder, DC electrode positive, running 330 seconds, 6013 at 75 amps. It should turn out fine. I'm not willing to admit that I was wrong, so I'm just going to pretend that this was fine. And through the magic of editing, I can do that. And that's it. Go plant a tree or something if you feel compelled to make up for your crimes against the environment. And thanks for watching.